Enjoy this movie, then visit BrainPop.com for much more. Yeah. Have you been standing here all night? Hmm. Uh-oh. Were you dividing by zero again? Dear Tim and Moby, What is computer programming? Thanks, Amy. He picked a good time to ask. Moby zapped his operations chip and he can't seem to do anything. Right, buddy? Don't worry, I've got you covered. We'll just switch you over to voice command. There. Now I can program you until your replacement chip arrives. I know, I know, your brain is no ordinary computer. But it does have some things in common with the ones people use. Computers can do all sorts of amazing things, from navigating the internet to piloting an airplane. But they can't do anything, at all, without a set of instructions. That's all a computer program is, a series of steps that a computer can follow. And somebody has to write those steps. Unlike you, computers can't really understand English. So programmers have to write their instructions in special languages. That's called coding, and the lines of instructions are known as code. There are literally hundreds of different languages. Thankfully, you don't need to know any of them to understand some programming basics. Just follow along as I code Moby. Okay, Moby, walk to the counter. All right, sorry about that. I have to remember that programs need to be really specific. They have to be step-by-step -step ordered instructions, an algorithm. That's why so many programming tools automatically number your lines of code. Let's try it. Moby, first lift your right foot, then move it ahead of your left foot, then put it down. Great. Let's call those three lines step right and save it as a function. That's like a mini program we can call on whenever we want. Now, let's make an identical step function for the left foot. Moby, step left, then step right. Now repeat lines 1 and 2 over and over. Repeating a section of code like this is called a loop, and it's something you can do in any programming language. Moby, stop, then walk back here, then stop. You've just been programmed. Lift your arms in triumph. Yeah, it is sort of like making a recipe. Instead of telling a computer what to do, you're telling it how to do it. Speaking of recipes, how about making a peanut butter sandwich for lunch? Moby, first put peanut butter on one slice of bread, then use the knife to spread it around. Okay, keep it together. Programmers have to be patient. You have to keep refining or iterating your code until it works the way you want it to. If there's a mistake or bug, you have to find out where it is and fix it. Moby, first open the peanut butter jar, then use the knife to scoop out some peanut butter, then spread it on a slice of bread, and finally put another slice on top. That's closer, but I think I'll just get lunch at school. Hey, that reminds me, I'm late. Quick, Moby. First, walk to a seat, then sit down in it. I can't take you anywhere. Here, try this. First... Check if the closest seat is occupied. If no, then sit. If yes, then move on to the next seat and repeat.
Yup, and we got to another big part of coding, conditional statements. That's when the program looks at an unknown value or variable and does different things depending on what it is. In this case, the variable was whether the seat was empty. Moby looked at one desk, judging its condition as occupied or empty. Based on what he saw, he moved on to the next desk or sat down. In other words, he took inputs and used them to generate outputs. Right, the computers most of us use don't have fancy eye sensors like you do. Instead, they have input devices like keyboards, mice, and touchscreens. The inputs are the things you type and the places you click or tap. And the output is how the computer processes your input. You need a program to what now? Oh, um, Ms. Lynch, can I get a bathroom pass? Visit us at BrainPop.com for more on this topic and hundreds of others. You'll find movies, games, quizzes, and activities. Learn more about the difference BrainPop can make.